Gotcha. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Monster Hunter World Iceborne video. This is the Game Economist, and today we're watching a special speedrun against the Extreme Behemoth, brought to you by Diva, Jasuk, Terra, and Angbada. Now, I think Diva also goes by Devast. He has his own YouTube channel where he posts guides and uh, other interesting runs. I'll leave a link to that in the description and in the comment section. Go ahead, jump over there, give him a subscribe, and tell him that I said hi. He's been working on his YouTube channel real hard, and he's just now starting to gain traction. So that's very exciting. I remember when I was at that point when I started YouTube. So yeah, go show him some love. We'll do a little narration of the run to keep it interesting. So they just dropped both boulders. You'll notice there was a guy actually standing on that hill, and what he was doing was he was luring the behemoth over. DeVos just used two poison smoke bombs on them because they want to get a poison going the the goal was you have to uh, for the tournament you have to defeat the extreme behemoth using only the claw attacks but you are allowed to use items so they're allowed to use those poison smoke bombs okay so they had a nice clean opening look at this that was kind of lucky they both grabbed the tail <laughs> but they showed up on either side of it, so they didn't knock each other off. That's one of the funny tricks about using the claw attacks, or not the claw attacks, the clutch claw on the uh, any monster, really, is if you're near one of your teammates, you run the risk of actually grabbing the same part at the same time. See, they just did that, actually. And when that occurs, somebody's gonna actually get kicked off, so it's kind of a wasted action. You'll notice they're all wearing the Rocksteady mantle. Very important to have that Rocksteady mantle, isn't it? because you, you stop from being interrupted. All right, and he's kind of lucky here. Um, <laughs> well, I suppose you could say unlucky, but here, he gets this jump off very good. That's very important that he gets that jump off, because that would have been a failed run otherwise. But he was in a situation where if he had grabbed the behemoth any later, he might have still been stuck on the behemoth's body, and he wouldn't have been able to make that awesome jump. <laughs> the Ecliptic Meteor, Final Fantasy Emote Dodge. So he just went back to grab those dragon paws, and that's because I'm assuming they really want to make sure that they control the behemoth's aggro in stage two to make sure he doesn't put down the Charybdis everywhere. The Charybdis is that tornado sort of tunnel. It's a big AoE and it's very annoying. It's one of the reasons he's so difficult, actually. Usually, if you can just get somebody to control the aggro, and that's that red beam, see, he's got the aggro right now. If you can just get somebody to control the aggro, the fight's just so much easier. So they're all running Temporal Mantle now. He has the Extreme Behemoth's aggro. I almost wonder if it would have been faster for him to just grab the Behemoth by the head and use his weapon attack. To, uh, I don't know if he would grab it in one move, the aggro, or if he'd need to do it in two moves, but I know you can actually grab his aggro pretty fast these days. But yeah, he used the Dragon Pods, and that's fine. Oh, and he got tremored. <laughs> So what that tells me if you know, we've seen one or two mistakes, right? Like we've seen him and a friend grab the same body part at the same time. We've seen him maybe use those dragon pods where he might have been able to grab the aggro while dealing damage. And he got tremored there, which means it's not a perfect run. But you know what? They didn't have a lot of time to get these speed runs done. So this is the fastest run that was completed in that time. But you know what? I bet they could get it under nine minutes. This was a nine minute run. Still really impressive. It's just interesting to think about, right? Another thing I found really interesting about this run is there's been a lot of talk about using a, a heavy bow gun that has wyvern snipe and, and using the uh, Velcana armor set bonus skill to get damage with that and the close range up mods. But it seems after they've studied or, or practiced and tested what they should be using to maximize their claw damage, they didn't go with any heavy bow guns. They all went with the greatsword. They all went with the acidic glavinous greatsword. And I find that really interesting. So it just means that we need to take another look at our claw zooka build because we might be wanting to do it with the greatsword. Also interesting that they didn't do four greatswords. They did three and then they did an acidic glavinous hunting horn. I wonder if that optimized their damage. I mean, I assume it did. There were a lot of special rules for this specific tournament. So they asked, are we allowed to use a hunting horn buff? Would that be cheating? I was like, go for it. <laughs> All right, so this is stage three. Oh, look at that. He actually guarded that. I, I would have figured he would have tried to dodge through it. He's going to get a sharpen going. He wants his purple sharpness back. Shink. <laughs> He's back in. Ooh, max potion. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> also, I noticed they haven't cut the tail. So this kind of makes me think, in order to cut the tail off of the extreme behemoth or the regular behemoth, you probably can't just hit the base of the tail. You actually have to hit the end of the tail. And it also makes me wonder, for other monsters that you're fighting, is it the same way? Do you notice when you grab a monster's tail? Oh, part broken! 
See, I haven't, I haven't watched the whole run in all detail, so I didn't know that they actually break the tail. It was just the case they needed more damage to cut that tail off. So it looks like cutting, attacking the base of the tail was fine. I knew that's fine for Kovtaroth. I wasn't sure if it was okay for the Behemoth or if you had to hit the tip of the tail, but it looks like you can hit the base of the tail and it'll still get cut. Very good to know. Look at that. Now he's going for the tail stub. <laughs> I'm guessing beforehand they kind of organized what part of the body they're going to target over and over. Like he's like, I'll take the tail, you guys take the forearms or something like that. <laughs> Look at that. And this is the, they, they call this the DPS check when it comes to the extreme behemoth fight. The reason for that is if you don't deal enough damage in stage 3 of the fight, they're in stage 3, if you don't deal enough damage what happens is he calls down an ecliptic meteor over and over and over again. But these guys are going to fly right through this, they're going to do fine. Oh, they got hit by the roar. Oh, no. So that's... They, he's had the sharpen. He's been hit by the roar. There's definitely some room for improvement in this run. <laughs> it is kind of a meme run, though. You know what I mean? Only claw attacks, right? <laughs> What's he got going on here? Is he going to be able to dodge this? Oh, he dive evaded. Behemoth trying to use his grab. <gasps> Did he get some... Oh, no, he didn't get anyone. It looked... I, I, I saw a, a status uh, on my Aang Bada, but that was actually fire. Oh, here we go. He did grab somebody. Somebody is bleeding now. Whoa. Oh, it's getting messy now, guys. He's in trouble. Oh, oh. What's going on there? That was weird. All right, let's get... <laughs> He's trying to get out of there. I see those poison smoke bombs coming out, too. They're going for another poison. I think they've had two poisons on him already. Uh, poison smoke bomb. You can't forget about that. It's really nice. When a monster goes to sleep, by the way... When you, you put a monster to sleep, you're not allowed to attack that monster because you'll wake him up, right? Well, you can actually use poison smoke bombs on him and not wake the monster up and get a nice poison off on the monster. So always have your poison smoke bombs with you if you want to deal a little bit more damage. He is right off to stage four. We're at the seven minute mark. They're doing a great job. I wounded it. <laughs> oh boy. We're in the lava stage. You know, it's funny, I think I actually prefer the lava stage for Extreme Behemoth. He's nuts to fight in the Nergigante area. Yeah, that Nergi nest is crazy. Ooh, oh man, that must be... That's tricky. He uses that really powerful ground pound there. You know, that new move he picked up when he became Extreme Behemoth. And that's probably a real deal changer when it comes to st the end of stage 3 and 4. Probably puts you at really high risk. So there is their meteor. That's the first one. He'll be... Oh, not meteor. The comet. Why do I always call it the meteor? I always call it the meteor, but that's the comet. Uh, it's placed right next to him. Let's see if they can get him to go into the ecliptic meteor now. There it is. Pretty fast. He better get behind that rock. Ooh. Very good. So that was ecliptic meteor one. They've got two more ecliptic meteors to run through. I would have loved to see the other runs, by the way. I think there was more than one run, but I think they had talked amongst each other, the hunters, and they kind of knew who had the fastest speed run at the time. So I, I don't think the other players ever submitted theirs. I would have liked to have seen it. It would have been fun. I would have liked to have seen some other strategies. Great sword it is, huh? We'll have to take a look at that. Oh, he's going nuts again. Here we go. Cliptic Meteor number, one, uh, number two. I almost said number one again. Nice. <laughs> I can see he's got Temporal Mantle ready to go. He just put it on. It's going to be an easy victory now. There's no way to lose now. Ooh. Notice when he gets knocked over, you can't play on both sides of the tail. You can only play on one side of the tail. Oh, he gets roared off. That's one of the troubles with using the Clutch Claw over and over on a monster. If they roar, you can't really do anything about it. Here comes the Comet. Oh, it's over. They're going to get that Ecliptic Meteor right away. It's over. They gotta hit him like one more time, probably. <laughs> He's like, give me a body part. <laughs> there it is. He should have just hopped off, honestly. Oh, look at this. Oh, man. Is, is he gonna die to this? Oh, he's dead. <laughs> oh, but it doesn't matter. They had plenty of lives. <laughs> Whoo. All right. 
And that's the end of the run. If you want to see more content by Diva Devast, if you want to see more of his content, once again, click on the link in the description or in the comment section. It'll take you right over to his YouTube channel. I want to thank everyone for participating. Of course, we handed out the, there was a cash reward and there was a new role in the a server called the Claw Zooka. Okay. Also, we can take a look at his build here. So he's got, uh, what is this? Affinity, health regen, and uh, defense augmentations. And then I'm seeing crit eye, handicraft, agitator, health boost, crit boost, weakness exploit, tool specialist. Look at that. Tool specialist is on the build. Interestingly, we do not see the, uh, we do not see the Velcana. What is the name of that mood? Frostcraft. We do not see Frostcraft on the build. So that's interesting. They still went with this setup. Uh, we'll have to see if it actually does more damage than the Clawzooka build that I was using with the Griffin Bazooka. It probably does. They probably kind of looked into it first before they really got serious into getting a good run. All right, that's going to be the end. They finished it in 9 minutes and 22 seconds. I'm going to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.